Hello everyone, so it's really nice to actually talk to you guys on camera, it's been quite a while and what I wanted to say is hey, I have a little update in my life. I usually don't talk about my life because I'm talking about other people, what's going on with news, politics, and the world, and I pretty much talk about what's going on in America, from Canada to Australia, UK, all over the place, right? now. I mean, that's okay, but I never make updates on my own personal life, so I really wanted to do that right now. I wanted to introduce a new plant, and I think that's really important to my channel, so hey, I'm going to take this minute, I'm going to show you my little plant, okay? So basically, I have two plants in the back. You probably maybe have been wondering about them because they kind of chill on the back. Now, my whole background is basically what? It's a little light, a painting, you got two candles, you got little... I don't know if you guys know what this is like a little bit of a tree it's a little portion of a tree that was cut and a little chunk of it and it was made as art and I thought that was really cool because I'm from the northwest I'm from Oregon I love anything that is pine and from trees so I get quite obsessive literally okay so my little plants that I want to share is I have this bamboo plant. I got this bamboo plant, I'd say like back in April, so it hasn't been that long. Now, I mean, I love this little plant. It's literally my favorite, so I put it in the back of my videos. And I think you guys have been seeing that for quite a while if you've been keeping up. But then, recently, I don't think you guys know about this. This is the first time it's ever been introduced on my channel. So basically, I want you to introduce my aloe vera plant, and it's been on my porch. I have a little porch that I have. A little squirrel loves stealing all my nuts and hiding them in all my plants. I gave up on like two of my plants because they're kind of dying to be completely honest. It was a bad summer in Oregon and also I'd say in Washington too because I went over to Washington. It's just bad. It's been very rainy. It's been very cold some nights and it hasn't been like a complete summer if that's like the best way to explain it. Not a complete summer, right? So you got aloe vera, okay? And this is a really cool plant because it's a succulent, you put on your porch, you barely have to water it, kind of like, like, like a cactus, you know, you don't have to water a cactus that often. So basically, it didn't take that long. I just basically, you know, go through this a little bit and it grew, it has grown so much. So now I have my aloe vera inside because if you know anything about Oregon or you know anything about Washington, the PNW is that... After August, once you start getting to September, it starts getting a little bit cold again. Once it starts getting a little bit cold again in Washington or Oregon, that pretty much means it's time to take your plants inside. So it's okay. It's like a time period. So maybe even if you live in Alaska, I'm sure that time period is like totally expanded. But basically, okay, you have your favorite plants. You put them inside and you're like, hey, it's going to freeze. So my plants are going to go bad. So you want to keep them alive inside. A lot of succulents, it works out like that. So Let's say you get aloe vera, you get it in the summer, okay? You have your summer plants, and then you have aloe vera next to it. Well, the aloe vera is going to be able to definitely carry on throughout the winter time. But anyways, I really wanted to get going on what I wanted to talk about and actually start talking about that because I want to talk about what's going on, you know, with London University. So they wanted to ban beef, ultimately, like, you know, burgers, and I would say, I don't know what else, like a lunchroom would make with beef but you know beef stew you have burgers you have other stuff like that maybe even like beef and lasagna and you know whatnot i can literally talk about different foods that have beef in it they could be served in the school but basically okay this university is like no we're gonna totally cut off on beef instead of giving the students an option i mean maybe you should advertise more on campus that it's not the best option or like you know reasons why to argue with that but I think that totally just getting rid of it completely I've never really seen anything like that before I mean kind of in a way so in New York I also made a video about this a long time ago not just a video on this all together but it was in one of my videos right so I was talking about Meatless Monday over in New York and you know I thought that was even crazy because I'm like, okay, that's one day, but it's also one day that someone can't choose if they want to, you know, bring meat to the school and they're forced to have another source of protein. I mean, like, what do you, like, okay, a lot of people are 
forcing people on what they want to eat now, I think that's crazy. So, okay, I have another example because literally it's happening everywhere over in Portland, okay, around here. Yeah, they made a new law that basically anybody that has, you know, chickens, they have to have it cage free in order to sell the eggs. So, of course, you could have all kinds of different chickens. You could have, like, you know, chickens that are in cages and make money off of that. Personally, I would have cage free chickens, but I just think that, like, forcing people what to do because that's not always the way that certain people are going to be. I mean, you know, I wish that everybody would have cage-free chickens, but you see, it starts with something like that, where everybody can agree with it, and they're like, yeah, why wouldn't you have cage-free chickens? And then all of a sudden, like, you're controlling someone the way that they're raising their chickens, and then the way that they're farming later on, maybe it's about, like, your tomatoes, the way that you're growing your tomatoes or your own garden, like, who knows? Seriously, Maybe in the future, eventually, places that are, you know, having cage-free chickens only, just like Portland, you're going to have, like, a farm and a, I don't know, maybe, like, a garden. It's going to be organic only somehow. Like, you don't want that happening. You don't want the state controlling every single thing that you grow on your property. I've watched a lot of survival videos, which is probably bad for my own health, but hey, I think it's kind of fun, honestly. But, um, like, a lot of things I've learned, if anyone watches, what, Canadian Prepper, I think that's pretty popular, but it's pretty fun to watch his videos. So, basically, he was talking about, like, I think it was actually really lately, that he was telling how, you know, people are not going to be able to grow the food that they're able to back in the day or as of, you know, modern day society, like right now. Eventually, it's going to be very hard to grow your own food in the future. And I think that, you know, completely, they want to be able to, like, get rid of your trees, like apple trees and, like, peaches and, like, pears or, like, bushes and, like, certain things like that. But maybe, like, down to the garden, they might actually do something. Down to the chickens, we've already seen that. Now that's starting to have an impact with our country. And, you know, a lot of other things, really, that are going to be continuously happening. Maybe the way that you raise pigs or cows, definitely cows, because isn't cows, like, a part of climate change, they say. So it's pretty weird, too. That also... Another thing that I find interesting is with uh, climate change, they always say that the cows are the ones that are eating all the wheat, all the resources and whatnot, but whenever we consume cows, that that's somehow destroying the planet. I don't know, that's kind of weird. You would say that if cows, more and more cows were existing because you know how you know, a number of animals, I don't know what the word is, but there's like a lot of them. Overpopulation, I think that's what it is. So you have overpopulation, yes, definitely, that's what it is, okay. I don't know, I had a little blank moment, but basically overpopulation is when you have, you know, a animal and then the animal starts, you know, growing and growing. Specifically, I would say the animal right now that's dangerous, it's growing, would be like great white sharks because you can't kill them, you can't destroy them because they're endangered, which is okay too. I don't want people going out fishing for sharks. I'm not like that. I think that that's actually bad. But, you know, the whole entire thing is that you can't do that. So that's one animal that's growing and it could also be very dangerous too. So I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, if it's infested, maybe you should think about it or something, right? But another thing is that, you know, you have a lot of cougars too. And the thing of cougars is that they're running all over the place in Hollywood and California. They're becoming quite an issue and they're killing people's dogs and, you know, they're just being very vicious. I saw a cougar. I was with my friend. We're on a hike and we definitely saw, I think it was like two cougars because we thought it was a deer. We're going to go take a picture. And I actually started going in front of my friend and I'm like going towards the bushes trying to get like a little picture for my Instagram, a little video and stuff like that. And all of a sudden she's like, no. And she started like doing like this little Thing. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I realized that something was bad. And like, we had like two cans of like peaches, and that's the only thing that I really had in my bag besides like a few other things, like my keys and stuff like that. 
and I had two cans of peaches and we're running we had to go up a hill because basically we're running for our lives at this point we definitely know that something's up and I saw it too so what I saw exactly like I literally saw two bodies because I haven't really seen like a cougar since I was little I saw one when I was little with my dad when I was um, also in a forest it was kind of nearby this place but it was about like 15 minutes out which is also weird too because it's near the area so must have been the area very um forest like it's like not where I typically go okay but basically when I saw the cougar it was like two of them they were like um like their bodies you know like how a cat goes and stuff like that like it's very on the ground and they're like a dark brown color and they're walking together it was like two of them together like a pack this is the way that I think. I me I eat vegetables, but at the same time, I think that there should be more vegan options for people that do want to make that decision. That's, you know, a new thing in our society. I don't think that you should ever get rid of beef. You should ever get rid of anything for somebody that likes meat. Don't force other people to have the diet that you have. Seriously, that's the number one thing. If you want to have a different diet, do not force people. Like, I like having, you know, smoothies a certain time of the month, but am I going to force anybody to do that that I live with or that I know or my family? Like, absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to force people to eat what I eat. So, I mean, that's just me. You can do what you want to do. But at the same time, I think that it's kind of the same thing. Not forcing people to exactly eat what you eat, especially if you have like a specific diet because you know that diet for a reason. Other people, they have options in life. You know, freedom totally exists, at least where we live in America. But the whole entire reason why I don't accept it is because I think that, you know, humans, at least in America, we have our rights to always eat beef, always eat chicken, always eat, you know, all kinds of different meat. I could literally go on and on, right? So, we have that right. Also, cheese or also if like milk or, you know, anything. You could go on on butter stuff like that right so we have the right to do that and all of a sudden we don't have the right to you know have certain food that we want to grow or sell in our own state and that starts becoming a problem I mean I'm not saying that Portland that's the worst thing ever it's not but at the same time it could be a lot worse I don't know what's gonna happen next this is also just my own opinion, but I think that people in Portland, like, we should kind of contest what's going on with this new rule with eggs, okay? I'm not a fan of chickens being in a cage, but also, we kind of have to fight for, like, farmer rights. I mean, they're not torturing the chicken, they're not killing them, they're keeping them in a cage for a little bit longer than we like, but at the same time, it's like... I mean, really, you can't just say that somebody can't do something. Like, do you see how this can escalate? And for those of you out there saying that possibly I might hate on, you know, other meat options that are, you know, chicken or beef or anything like that. Like, I've tried, okay? I made a cauliflower meal where basically I had, like, the cauliflower, like, buffalo wings or whatever it is. Like, I fried them. I did everything that I needed to do. I did not like them. I put the buffalo sauce in them. That was just one thing. I've also tried, you know, vegan burgers. I did not necessarily really like that. It's just what I also believe in, too. I also believe in, you know, it's okay to have animals occasionally. I don't like animals, sorry or in like a bad position though like i would definitely like to buy from a nice farmer that treats their animals very well that you know raises their animals from young to old and you know if you go to any farm you can definitely find that a lot of cows a lot of you know chickens especially and you can find really nice farmers you really can so people that are always like oh all farmers are evil that's not true at all it's not my advice is personally i would not go to london university for just having this little ban on what kind of food you can eat there why would you pay all that money to go there and you can't even have a burger like i said it's not the end of the world to not have that meat option but also at the same time i think that that definitely goes against everybody's rights it's like if you said you can't have peaches there you can't have cherries or you can't have bread like it's pretty weird I know that there's no real reason behind that, but, you know, honestly, I'm pretty sure it's 2018. Anybody could come up with a reason, probably with even cherries or bread, why we shouldn't be consuming that. 
and literally be down to i'd say everything like just down to nothing and say everything's bad for climate change so that's just the way that i think i know you'd be like that's ridiculous because you like pick off apples or cherries but i think the people go crazy and wild with everything they'd be like no the trees need more they need to over have their cherries on them or their apples and make our world better like i don't know people are literally going crazy i don't know what's going on it's like a clown world everybody says that but i have to continuously repeat that it's the only thing that makes sense but yeah, pretty much they're trying to totally infringe on every single right that we have, starting with guns to farming to literally our education, every single thing under the sun. I don't have to get into that, but yeah, they're really trying to dig into how we're farming now. So another thing that is going to be totally in effect is, okay, are you thinking about hunting? Hunting is going to be impacted a lot because the way that you hunt, they're going to say that that's dangerous because if they're saying that one thing's dangerous, they're going to say that that is also. Everybody knows that the only thing dangerous about hunting is if you have like a bear trying to attack you or a cougar or anything dangerous out in the wild, like a coyote or a wolf or whatever, right? I don't think coyotes actually attack. They're out of the picture, but like a wolf, right? Okay. But yeah, basically, I'm just about to wrap everything up because I think I said everything that I wanted to say for at least this video, but I mean, pretty much, I think that, you know, the whole entire message I'm trying to sum with this is that don't control what other people eat. Just don't do it. I mean, you might, okay, I don't like if someone wants to indulge on McDonald's every single day of their life. I mean, that's okay. Every once in a while, who cares? Like, honestly, I don't care what you do. But like I'm saying, every single day of your life, right, you're picturing someone and they literally go, you know, every single day having these McChickens or having, you know, french fries and stuff like that and they're clogging their arteries, they're about to have a heart attack and they're basically about to get diabetes, all these different things, right? And like you want to stop them. I can't stop anybody. I can't stop you, I can't stop me, I mean, I can't stop you, but I mean, you know what I mean. You just can't stop people sometimes from what they want to do. You have to let people make that decision for them. You can share information, you can try to help them with their diet, but at the same time, forcing somebody to all of a sudden just not eat meat, all of a sudden not have like ranch or something, I don't know, ranch, sure. Like, something like that, right? You're controlling what an individual is doing, and that's just kind of abusive in one way, I think. At least in America, where we have freedom. On that note, I'm gonna head out, but hey, I'm gonna have another video coming very shortly. There's a lot of videos on my channel if you want to go check them out. And if you want to go donate to this channel to consider supporting it, you can go to my PayPal. The link is down in my bio at Living Capone. Or also, you can go to my Subscribe Star. And I'll check you next time.